Hi, my name is John Gibbons and I'm an osteopath and today we're going to look at how to assess for sacral torsions using a patient. In this case, you'll notice that the patient has a lumbar lordosis. If that's the case, then the sacrum can only be in a position of nutation. If the patient has a flat back, then the position of the sacrum can only be in counter nutation. So if it's counter nutated, it's either going to be what we call a right on a left axis or a left on a right. In this case, because she is, has a lumbar lordosis, then the sacrum can now only be rotation to the left on the left axis or rotation to the right on the right axis. And what that means is, as an example, the sacrum when you walk in will rotate right on the right axis and it will rotate left on the left axis. So we'll call this right on right and left on left. And that is normal physiological motion for when we are moving. If we do happen to have a counter-nutated sacrum, the lumbar spine will be flexed and it will be a non-physiological way of movement also for walking and for the sacrum. Now, to assess for forward sacral torsion, if we come on to the PSIS and bring our thumbs onto the sacral sulcus, I do happen to have a pelvis that I wanted to show you. So this would be the PSIS, this is L5, and we will bring our thumbs or fingers into the sulci here and we would wait a few seconds for our thumbs or fingers to sink. If you notice the right side is deep then we know that it is rotated to the left side. If we notice the left thumb is deep then we know it is rotated to the right side. So that's a big giveaway. So let's have a look on the patient. We find the PSIS, find the L5 and bring our thumbs and just wait a few seconds for the thumbs to sink down. I notice that the right side seems to sink deeper than the left side. So what that tells me is that the sacrum is more than likely rotated to the left. And probably because we have a lordosis, then more than likely the sacrum has gone forward and it means that it is rotated left on the left axis here. So it's called left on left. If I confirm that, I can do one of two things. I ask my patient to come up with your elbows, please. And when she extends the lumbar, the sacrum should nutate. The right side is already nutated, so potentially the left side will go and meet the right side so they become level. If that's the case, then I know the left side is capable of nutating to meet the right side. I don't really need to do the next one, come back down. But you can, if you want to, bring the pelvis posteriorly, which now causes the lumbar to flex. So in this case, if the right side cannot counter nutate because it's fixed in nutation. So when we palpate the sulci, it's still deep on the right side. Whereas when we go into extension and then come up to your elbows, it is able to nutate on the left because the right side is already there and now it is level. So what I've found on this patient is we have a left on left sacral torsion. In the next episode, we will look at posterior sacral torsions.